Hello class, today we're going to be learning lesson 2-5 in our textbooks, which is all about um, covering the topic of how to solve equations with variables on both sides. So we've done uh, variables just on one side and multi-steps, and now we're kind of combining all of this stuff. Um, so there's, as you can see in this example, there's variables on both sides. So before we begin, I want to kind of give you some tips. And the first step I would say is to move the variables to one side. Now you can pick if you want to move the variables to the left side or to the right side. It's completely up to you. But once you've done that, then you need to move those constants or the lonely numbers to the other side. Lonely numbers. To your other side. Okay, so um, it's very straightforward compared to what we've been doing in the past couple lessons. So let's just begin. Let's look at this first one. It says to solve 7 minus 8x, which is equal to 4x minus 17. So I could pick whichever side I want to move the variables to, the variable of x. So for instance, if I moved the 4x to the other side, I'd be subtracting 4x, and I'd be dealing with negative numbers. But if I add 8x and move it to the right side, then I'd be working with positive numbers. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. And that's what you should do every time, is just kind of look ahead, see which you think um, is going to make the easiest work for you, and go that way. So negative 8x plus positive 8x cancel each other out. And I'm just going to write what I have. I have 7 is now equal to 4x plus 8x, which is 12x. And I still have the minus 17. Okay. Now I'm going to move the 17 to the other side so that I can get this x all by itself. And I do that by adding 17 to both sides. So now those cancel each other out. I'm left with 24 on the left side is equal to 12x. One more step, I need to get the x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 12. And I find that x is equal to 2. So it's not too bad. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it in. This time I have two places where I need to plug in my 2 just to check to make sure that I did get the equation right. And when I'm working this out, I just want to see if the left-hand side equals the right side. So never when you're checking are you going to move stuff to either side of the equal sign. So 7 minus 8 times 2, is that equal to 4 times 2 minus 17? So this is 7 minus 16. Is that equal to 8 minus 17? Well, this left-hand side is negative 9, and the right-hand side is negative 9. So it looks like um, I found the right solution. So let's go on to another one. Very similar. This time it says solve 13 plus 5x, which is equal to 2x minus 8. So let's see. Do I want to subtract 5x to both sides? Well, then I have 2x minus 5x. But if I move the 2x, I'd be subtracting 2x from 5x, and I think that that's what I want to do. Because I really like working with positive numbers if I can help it. Okay, so those 2x's cancel out. I'm going to rewrite every single time. 5x minus 2x is 3x, and now that's equal to negative 8. Okay. I need to get the 3x by itself, so I'm going to subtract both sides by 13. Those 13s cancel each other out. I'm going to rewrite this. 3x is now equal to negative 8 minus 13, which is the same as negative 8 plus negative 13. That's negative 21. All right, divide both sides by 3, and I find my x is equal to negative 7. All right, let's see if that works out. Again, I'm going to check it by plugging it into both sides and seeing if the left side equals the right side. So 13 plus 5 times negative 7, does that equal 2 times negative 7, 
minus 8. This is the same as 13 minus 35. The right hand side is the same as negative 14 minus 8. So let's see, 13 minus 35 is negative 22. And the other side, negative 14 minus 8 is also negative 22. So I'm done. I solved it. Okay? This is not that bad at all. So why don't we move on to another problem. Now this time I have a fraction. It says to solve 9x minus 5, which is equal to the fraction 1 fourth times the quantity of 16x plus 60. I have bigger numbers and I have a fraction. And what we did before is we multiplied both sides by the reciprocal to get the fraction by itself. But I'm going to show you this time that I can actually use the distributive property. Okay, so 9x minus 5 is going to stay the same on the left hand side. 1 fourth times 16x is the same as 16 divided by 4. So that leaves me with 4x plus. 1 fourth times 60 is the same as 60 divided by 4, which is 15. Awesome. Now it looks just like a problem, which I just had. Um, I think I'm going to move the 4x to the opposite side. So I'm going to do that by subtracting. Again, it's up to you what side you want to move it to. You're going to get the same answer. 9x minus 4x is 5x minus 5 is now equal to 15. I'm going to isolate the 5x, so I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Those 5s cancel each other out, and I'm left with 5x is equal to 20. One more step, divide both sides by 5. This time my x is equal to the number 4. So let's check it out. Let's see if it works when I plug it in to both sides. 9 times 4 minus 5 is that equal to 1 fourth times 16 times 4 plus 60. All right, I got some work for me, but let's see. 9 times 4 is 36 minus 5. And I need to do what's on the inside first. 16 times 4 is 64 plus 60. 36 minus 5 is 31 times 1 fourth, this is 124. And those can cancel each other out. I have 31. So yes, 31 does equal 31. I found the correct solution. Okay, let's do one more very, very similar to this. I have it down there already. Solve 4x minus 5, which is equal to 1 fifth, another fraction, times the quantity 5x plus 20. So remember I told you, um, if you wanted to, you can multiply both sides by the reciprocal by 5, or you could just multiply straight through using the distributive property, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to rewrite this. 4x minus 5 is now equal to 1 fifth times 5 is just the number 1, plus 20 times 1 fifth is the number 4. That looks pretty easy. Okay. Um, remember, there's an invisible 1 right here in front of the x. So I'm going to subtract x on both sides. Those cancel out. 4x minus 1x is 3x. Minus 5 is now equal to 4. I'm going to add the 5 to both sides to move it away from the 3x. And now 3x is equal to 9. One more step, divide both sides by 3, and x is now equal to 3. All right, we did it. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Make sure it works out. 4 times 3 minus 5. Is that equal to this messy side? 1 fifth times 5 times 3 plus 20. 4 times 3 is 12 minus 5. The other side is 1 fifth times 15 plus 20. Okay. 12 minus 5 is 7. Is that equal to the other side? Oops. 1 fifth 
of 35. Yes, indeed, that is seven on both sides. I am done. Awesome. All right, we're going to do one more thing in this lesson. Sometimes you might run across an equation that doesn't just have one solution. Okay, we've learned this uh, before, but let's just review it. Okay, and let's see what conclusions we can come up with. Um, here's our first equation. It says 3x is equal to 3 times the quantity of x plus 4. So let's just work it out and see what we get. Um, I'm going to use the distributive property. So I have 3x is equal to 3x plus 12. And then if I move the variables to the left hand side, I'm going to subtract 3x. And I find that I get 0 on the left side is equal to 12. Now I know that that is not possible, right? 0 does not equal 12. So when this happens, when you get uh, some uh, equ equality that is actually not equal, we're going to put no solution. So this means that for this made up equation, you're never going to be able to find a solution that satisfies it. Okay. Now the second one, let's try it out. It says 2x plus 10 is equal to 2 times the quantity of x plus 5. Let's do the distributive property again. 2x plus 10 is equal to 2x plus 10. Huh, I have the exact same thing on both sides. You could go further and you could subtract both sides by 2x and you would have 10 equals 10. So that's a true statement, right? That 10 is equal to 10, but I don't actually have a specific solution. So this means that every single number that you plug in to x is going to work as a solution. We call this identity. So this means that all real numbers are solutions. So there's not just one solution, there's infinite many number of solutions, okay? So to conclude on your own, if possible, I want you to try to solve and check your solutions for these three equations. First one is 3 minus 4a equal to 5 times the quantity of a minus 3. The second one is 9z plus 12 is equal to 9 times the quantity z plus 3. And the last one is 8y minus 6 is equal to 2 thirds times the quantity of 6y plus 15. So come prepared with any questions that you might have when you come back to class.